Hi, and welcome to lesson 50.4 on operations with scientific notation. So we're going to be adding, subtracting, and multiplying, and dividing numbers in scientific notation. And we'll get started here. So here's our first example. And it says... Uh, here, the table shows the population of the three largest countries in North America in 2011. Find the total population of these countries. So we're going to be adding all of these together. But what we should do is make sure that the exponents are the same for each power of 10. So we can, uh, you know, line up those decimals right. So here are the three. Okay, same power of 10. So uh, here we go. 3.1, that one's 8, okay, fine. This one is, we have to move the decimal one more time right there. So that's going to be 8, right? Because uh, this one and this one is actually the exact same number. And then we have this one here, that's to the 8th power. So we add them all up, add up uh, 3.1.2. 338 and 1.1, add them up, and you have this. And then they're all to the power of 8, so there you go. And so that's one method. The other method is you can just write them all in standard notation. And uh, the three numbers written in standard notation, then write them out, and then change this number into scientific notation. Either way, you still get the same answer. As you can see here, uh, this number is the same as that number. Okay. So, this is your turn, and you're going to try to do this, pause the video, and see if you get the same answer as me. So, using the population, how many more people live? So, we have to subtract the Mexico and the Canada. So, let's go back here. Subtract the Mexico and the Canada. Uh, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to just use these two right here. I'm going to use these two. So I'm going to take 1.1 minus 0 0.338. And so we would have, uh, what, zeros here? This is 2. And that's uh, 9 minus 3 is 6. And this is 10 minus 3 is 8. Uh, whoops, no, 10 minus 3 is not 8. Uh, I need my eraser. 10 minus 3 is 7. So I have 7, 0.762. So this is 0.762 times 10 to the 8th. Now, let me bring that over here. If I have 0 0.762 times 10 to the 8th, then I need to... I need it actually be 7.62 times 10 to the sum. Now, what this means is I have to move. I have to move the de this eight means I have to move the decimal seven t uh, eight times to the right. But if I have it here, I only have to move it seven times to the right now because it's already been moved once. So that would be seven times. So that would be my answer, and that is right here. So we're going to multiply now and dividing with scientific notation. And when we multiply or divide, so we, we have the situation where the sun makes an orbit around the center of the Milky Way. It travels that many kilometers. The orbit takes 225 million years. At what rate does it travel? Looks like rate is distance divided by time. So the distance is kilometers divided by the time is 220 five million years. So we have the distance in kilometers divided by 225 million years. And this becomes our core idea. So um, what, did, what did they do here? They have that staying the same. And then we turn this into scientific notation. And we have the, now we can divide these co these factors here, divide them, that's 0 0.9. And then here we can just subtract using our exponents rules. Uh, we can subtract those exponents to 14 minus 8 is 6. And then we have we put them together, 0 0.9 times 10 to the 6th power. That's what this is here. But this is saying, uh, now that number is less than 1. 
it needs to be at least one. Uh, so at least one and less than 10. So that means this has to move the decimal six times to the right, but if we move it over one over here, now we only have to move it five times to the right. So this is our official answer. And we can check to see if that's reasonable. I'm gonna move forward because we have these two problems here for you to try. So pause the video and see if you get the same answers that I do. Okay, so light travels at a speed of that many miles per second. It takes light uh, from the sun that long to reach uh, Saturn. Find the approximate distance. Well, to find the approximate distance, uh, we come back to this. The distance is equal to the rate times the time. And so uh, the distance, uh, uh, so the rate, they, they tell us the rate right here. The rate is that many miles per second. So it's going to be um, 1.86 times 10 to the fifth. I better make this a little bit smaller here. One times, uh, and I'll do this times. 4.8 times 10 to the third. So 1 1.186 times uh, 4.8 is 8.928. And then times 10, and you're, when you're multiplying exponents, you add them, uh, or powers, you add the exponents. So 5 plus 3, so that's going to be 8.928 times 10 to the eighth. And that should be our answer that we're looking for right there. Great. Next, light travels at a speed of uh, that many miles per minute. Pluto's average distance is that on average, how long does it take sunlight to reach Pluto? Uh, okay, so that's the time. So how, how long does it take? So that's time. And so we would use our Distance equals rate times time again. Uh, I'm going to bring this a little bit like this. So I have those numbers there. And I'm going to erase this. So distance equals rate times time. Or I, if I want the time, then the distance divided by the rate is the time. So this is going to be division. So the distance is uh, 3. Uh, you know what, I'll do 3.67.67. What I'm doing is I'm eyeing this right here. And so I'm going to, uh, three. I'm going to put this in, I'm going to write this in scientific notation. So it's gonna, I put the decimal there. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So times 10 to the ninth. 3.67 uh, times 10 to the ninth. That's the distance divided by the rate, which is, I'm looking at it, 1.17 times 10 to the seventh. Okay, so uh, 3.67 divided by 1.17 is, oh boy, it's 3.14, okay, times 10. And then you could add, subtract those exponents, 9 minus 7, because you're dividing the powers of 10. 3.14 times 10 to the second. Let's see how I did. There. 3.14 times 10 to the second, and got it. Super. Okay, scientific notation on a calculator. So this is kind of weird. On many scientific calculators, you can enter numbers in scientific notation by using the function labeled EE -E or EE. -E. Usually the letter E takes a place of uh, power of times 10. So the number 4.1 times 10 to the ninth would appear as 4.1 E9. Okay, these, this, and this, when you, they, we see this, but the calculator will write it that way. And you can see the times 10 is the E right there. So super simple. We have this here. We have these, um, we have these different uh, areas for the uh, what, continents, and uh, you could punch this in a calculator. You to find this, you would enter that in a calculator, and it would.
pump it all out there for you. So what you can do is, oh yeah, so this is simply just writing it out. What would this be on a calculator? Well, pause the video and try to uh, write down what you think they will be. And by the way, they're showing you, here's a regular scientific notation, and this is it written as a calculator. So you could use this as a guide for your answers here. Okay. Uh, so, try it out, pause it. Okay, now that one's at 3e negative 7, 2.7e 13. This one's 4.5 times 10 to the negative first, and this is 5.6 times 10 to the 12th, and this is 6.98 times 10 to the negative eighth. And so there you go. That is what you got to know for our scientific uh, uh, operations. And I hope that you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.